Hello. Pot items are underused. A lot of people just straight up ignore them, probably because many of the better ones require crafting materials that do not respawn. Exceedingly rare to find, yeah sure. But after watching this video, you will be using pot items for more than just putting diabetic and anorexic to sleep. Even if you have sworn to never try pot. Why? Well, good thing you asked, because there's a lot more to these pots than meets the eye. Pot items offer so much versatility and have a lot of pot and shul. <laughs> While also making bosses like the Deathbirds and Malanias piss easy. Also, I'll be ranking the pots because you don't want to waste your time on bad pot, do you? The fire pot does exactly what you'd think it does. But what you may have not noticed is that this has a scaling in strength because, uh... Anyways, they're cheap to craft and they're surprisingly good, especially if you wear a uh, jar on your head. Uh-huh. Strong B tier. Holy Water Pot also does what you'd think it does, except the water in this is probably blessed by Rick, soldier of God himself, because skeletons do not resurrect and the worst bosses in the game, the Deathbirds, die pretty much instantly by using this against them. It's like they're League of Legends players and you're trying to wash them. Strong S tier, because cleansing filth from this world is great, and this is the best tool for that. Volcano Pot does not what you think it does. Instead of shooting lava everywhere like, I don't know, every other volcano related thing in the game, these just make a cloud of ass gas that could make a skunk blush. Smelling these is kinda like going to the gas station bathroom where truckers go. Use these against big enemies because these are basically the firebots but do more damage, but slower. B tier. Poison pots do something, mm, I wonder what. These are easy to craft and are basically just free damage against anything without poison resistance and you can activate a damage buff with the mushroom crown and kindred of rot's exultation but poison is still just poison and this inflicts the weakest type of it. On the topic of poison there is the fetid pot, they are literally pots filled with shit. Isn't that just a lovely thought? These inflict a stronger poison while also inflicting yourself with it, which is useful for clickbait thumbnails when you try to one-shot something. But not much else. Generally not worth it because the weaker poison does more damage over a longer duration. But these are like the ultimate insult, so throw these at Malania to feel better. C tier for both. Speaking of C tier, we have the magic pot. Why would you ever use these? Just use sorceries. Both consume FP and the pots miss way more often. They're easy to craft, but they're generally just not worth it. C tier. On the topic of things that are not worth it, we have you. And the ranker pots. Descaling in intelligence and faith? The devs were probably laughing their asses off making some of these items. And you want me to use human bone shards to craft these? I'd rather throw myself off a cliff. D tier. Finally, something useful again. Because the lightning pots are not terrible. Most enemies are not very resistant to lightning, excluding the oversized lightning dogs with wings. Also the lightning pots scale with dexterity for some odd reason. Maybe the devs were on pot when making these stats. <laughs> yeah, so B tier. On the topic of pots, if you take a cracked pot as your keepsake, it will remove two pots from Ariza side tomb and one from the nomadic merchant Kaelid South, which is pretty ridiculous. Anyways, if you played Elden Ring when it released, you might remember anything bleed related to be insanely OP. They've since been nerfed, but it seems like they forgot about this next pot item, the swarm pot, which is very good. It's basically the pre-nerfed swarm of flies in a jar. Depending on how much arcane you have, these can do over 400 bleed buildup per pot from a safe distance, might I add, while also activating buffs from bleed procs. So yeah, stupidly good. S tier. Oil pot has oil in it. Strangely though, the US has invaded it. Wait, what's that sound? Besides that, the oil pots are very, very good because they increase the amount of fire damage you do by 50%, which you can further increase with several buffs. Strong A tier. Lastly, snooze pots. They put the diabetic and the anorexic man to sleep, so there already is enough for S tier, but there are so many wacky enemies you can put to sleep as well, like living jars and flame chariots, which just makes this hilarious. Also, these are probably the strongest device for sleeping anything in the game. So yeah, it's an easy S tier for me. Okay, finally I'm done. I can rest. Oh shit, there's more. Yeah, so there's more pot items that use different pots called ritual pots. 
Ritual pots make for better pots overall, and they also have a lot up their sleeve, and you don't want to miss these. Academy Magic Pot. Not even giving these more damage can make them useful. You have spells that home in. Use them. This is not worth it. Yeah, so maybe the ritual pots are useless after all. C tier. On the topic of useless, this next pot, the Albenoric pot makes it so that enemies can't heal after you stick them with this um, mysterious white substance. Except it doesn't. Like, it literally does not work. Melania still heals, and so does goddamn everything else that heals. It only works against players and player NPCs, so great, useless item for PvE. D tier. Speaking of uselessness, we have the alluring pots. Despite their name, there's nothing alluring about these. The one and only thing they do is make humanoid looking enemies attack the location where you throw this piece of worthless code at. The thing is, these wouldn't be so shitting useless if they worked during combat encounters. Oh right, did I mention they don't work in combat? Because they don't work in fucking combat. They do work against monkeys though, but if you need these for monkeys, then I'm afraid you probably need to watch how to get OP videos on YouTube. So, I don't know, put it in S tier for all I care. Okay, I don't do that. Continuing with the theme of not caring, the beast lure pot does exactly what you think it does. If you guessed lures beast, then congrats, you pass kindergarten. But unlike the past three pot items, this one has a use, since it's quite effective against rune bears, and if you're like me, then you absolutely need these for rune bears. Still though, only C tier, because that is a very niche use. Ancient dragon po- I can't pronounce it. It does lightning damage. And basically everything I said about the lightning pots applies here. Not bad, not OP, or game breaking. Just good. B tier. Speaking of things that are just good, the Sacred Order pot, it's the same thing here. Everything I said about the Holy Water pot applies to this one as well. These shit on the death birds, who probably needed the bath anyways. So think of it like doing them a service. The thing with this one is the crafting recipe though, which uses golden centipedes, which have a piss poor drop chance for a very specific enemy. So that's enough to demote this to A tier. Next in line, the Cursed Blood Pot. These have a pretty cool use since they make your spirit summons target a specific enemy while also buffing them with plus 10 damage. Percent damage. Combining this with the uplifting aromatic makes for a pretty good spirit summons playthrough. This item also has a very uh, questionable item description. Let me just read it for you. Throw at enemies to douse them in accursed blood, causing summoned spirits to assail them with a rabid fervor. A childhood memory of the Lord of Blood. The mental image of Moog throwing shit smelling blood like a little baby is just hilarious. Until you find about the questionable relations he's having with his um, brother. B tier. Freezing Pot. Even if these couldn't be used to cancel Melania out of Waterfowl Dance, I would still consider these very good. These are almost like holding a liquid nitrogen bomb on your hand, because they're essentially free frostbite procs to all enemies susceptible to it. Still though, it cannot be understated that their usefulness primarily comes from them being able to stun Melania out of her vortex of bullshit. S tier. Easy. Just so easy. Speaking of bullshit, the giant's flame fire pots are good. Oh wait, that had nothing to do with bullshit. This script needs a rewrite. Anyways, these pots are good for a faith build. Faith builds do get some insane pyromancies, but hear me out. The pot items can be given more buffs from outside items, like using the jar on your head and using the companion jar talisman. I also like these because of their significantly lower FP cost, and unlike the magic pots, these actually do very good damage. A tier. Well, I might not use the magic pots, but I certainly want to use the red main fire pots. They are a beefed up version of the fire pots and scale very well with your muscles. I know I've been what some call unfair against some of the other pot items, similar in nature to this one, but I have an unhealthy obsession with strength weapons, which is why this one is A tier. And last, but not least, in the slightest, we have another pot doused with someone's uh, bodily fluids. That being Melania's, because it's the rot pots. Causes 300 rot buildup per pot. If you've underestimated pot items before, stop now. Because rot is just hilariously stupid, and 300 buildup per a single pot is just nasty. The crafting recipe isn't too bad either, and the butterflies that you squish in the pots are canonically from Melania, and throwing these at her is just a pretty funny thought. That's all the pots covered. 
do tell me if you learned anything useful. You passed kindergarten a few moments ago, now let's see if you pass elementary school. Also write something funny in the comments and I'll include your funny haha in the next piece of unwatchable content I make. Goodbye.